Well, Twitter seems to be the battleground now for fighters and retired fighters as well. And George Cambosos, well, he had some words for our own Pauli Malinaji. And the tweet says, and I believe you haven't been relevant since 2013 when AB took your girl in belt. You've been beaten up by MMA fighters and bare knuckle and sparring and kicked out of events since the laughing emoji. Believe your own bullshit. I'll say that. We're on YouTube. We can say that. Uh, got one thing right, though. Cambosos depositing another hefty check. Now, this is in response to when, Pauli, you mentioned uh, you offered your analysis on the upcoming fight with Cambosos and Lomachenko. Well, the floor is yours to, re to well, respond. I think, first of all, I think this is also, you know, a uh, boxing scene sort of, they know how to take little snippets of, of quotes and maybe um, getting guys started. I remember, for example, first and foremost, that's how I'm going to address this, first and foremost, because I think that I remember when I was fighting, I would do one interview, for example, and there would be multiple quotes in one interview. And then Boxing Sea would make like four headlines out of it in four different mm -hmm. days, right? So they'd be taking little snippets. And so people reading it would think like, oh, Paul, he's constantly doing interviews. He's constantly in the news. Meantime, it would be just one interview. And I was, you know, just analyzing different things in the interview. And, you know, people are thinking it's more to it than it is. I think in this situation, um, my criticism was that Cambosos versus Lomachenko, or Lomachenko versus Cambosos, is a title fight. That, I, I think everybody, uh, would, most right. people would agree with me. You know, you're c coming off back-to-back -back losses with Devin Haney where you didn't win a round in 24 rounds. And then the, for every all intents and purposes, most people think the Max Hughes gift, uh, decision was a gift. You know, so I, I'm not really knocking, I wasn't really knocking George Cambosos, but I get it because at the same time, I've been a fighter too, and so whenever you hear negative stuff about you, you kind of take it personally, you get mad, you also, you're also looking for things to get you riled up and, and, and you know, get, get your juices going, fight. motivated, you know, because it really, you know, when, when you're coming off the performances George is coming off of, it's you against the world, right? And no, people stop believing in you, I've been there, you know, you, people stop believing in you, people give all the opinions, and you start to really look at it for fuel for your fire. Personally, I think he's just not skilled enough. I just don't think he's skilled enough for this fight, you know? And I don't think he wins the fight. But it doesn't mean that I was actually unhappy about him depositing another check. I actually mentioned that. I think he's setting himself up for retirement based off of one win off Tofimo Lopez. I think he's managed to get several paydays. I think he's managed, he's manufactured that part of the business very, very well. And I think that's been intelligent on his part. Anytime a fighter is able to get out of boxing with, it, with his... Uh, uh, with his, all his faculties and, and, and good money in the bank. Dude, I'm actually happy for it. I was actually, so that's why I, I think that in that regard, I think everything's taken out of context there. You know, I don't think he would beat Slomachenko. It's my job to analyze fights. I don't think it's competitive based on his recent run of form. I, I just can't see it being that way. But George has a right to be insulted by it. George has a right to, as a competitor, he's got a right to, to go at it in that way. Now, as far as not being relevant in 2013, yeah, bro. You know, but I'm not trying to be relevant. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, retired. I retired. No, no, I, I retired even after 2013. I still lasted a few more years. I even caught a couple of, picked up a couple extra paydays. Actually, George is in a part of his career right now that you could look at in my career, like 2014, 2015, you know, picking up those extra paydays based off of your reputation. That's what George, George is essentially in the same thing. So by George's standards, if we're going to go by George's standards, George hasn't been relevant since he beat Telfimo Lopez. Mm. You know what I mean? That's it. Because, mm -hmm. because if you look at my career, if you're not, I'm not relevant since 2013, I still had big fights after 2013, but I faded. You know, I was, I, but I was in big fights stacked in my, my bank book, just right. the way George is doing now. So if we're going to go by that, by that, um, by George's own criticism, George shouldn't be in this fight because George hasn't been relevant since Antonio Lopez win by his own standards. If he's going by 2013, so so if we're going by that, I mean, it, can he really blame me for analyzing the fight the way I'm analyzing it? Because by his own standards, he doesn't realize that he's actually analyzing his own career mm. by the same way. Uh, also, having said that, man, I mean, he, I, if he thinks. He won the Maxi Hughes fight, then he definitely thinks I've won the Artem Lobo fight. I mean, I'm getting beat up. The whole, the whole getting beat up in, in bare knuckle and, 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 and MMA. Um, I, I, I think, you know, I have more of a case for the decision against Artem Lobo than even I, though I did it one-handed with a broken hand, I easily outboxed him. I think I have more of a case for that decision than, than George has in the decision he got over Maxi Hughes, if we're really talking about it. So if we're going to break, break it down that way, He's kind of wrong, and then he's kind of right. I haven't been relevant in 2013, but by the, since 2013, by those, but if you take those standards, then George hasn't been relevant since Tofimo Lopez and shouldn't mm -hmm. be in this fight. So he's kind of bringing it back on himself. But nonetheless, 
as a competitor, he has a right to go at it this way. You know, he has a right to be feel, feel the fuel, feel the motivation. I don't even blame him for it, bro. I, I, I'm old enough to know that I, I, I'm not going to take that part personally. Right. Even when I had the thing with Devin Haney, he's supposed to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, because fighters, you know, if we don't get that motivated over, over the insults and over the negative uh, press we get, you know, what's going to motivate us? We're looking for anything to take fuel from. It was like the Jordan thing. Jordan would take anything to take fuel right. from, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't really relevant, he'd turn it relevant. So I don't knock that at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with Lomachenko Cambosos being made. I just don't think it should be a title fight. Not in a lightweight division that has several other good fighters that I would rate at this point ahead of Cambosos. But nonetheless, still happy for him that he's getting that check. I, I, I actually expressed that myself so he can... The fact that he reiterated yeah. it is, is fine with me. I actually mentioned that myself anyway. And but, for people at home who are interested in what's going on, go watch the show where we actually talk yeah, about deep this waters. In, in detail. Deep so you waters. Can, you can get the whole context of, of where Paulie's mindset was at, his explanation behind it. Um, you know, but I, I, and again, just like to, to, to kind of piggyback what you said, what you said there, Paulie, a lot of times fighters, uh, their personalities and their fight styles are very similar. You know, George is a very nip tuck, aggressive um, scrappy kind of guy, and, and you know he's going to be offended by these. He's great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he's, got a, that he's a fiery blood. guy, just like you're a fiery Italian. Like it's just it's part of the it's part of being a fighter. Every fighter has that in them. And again, when you read things about yourself, especially out of context, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get something in, in, in your gut, and you want to. I used to get mad there. the same way, bro. Yeah, if somebody picked against me in a fight. I would be so mad. And then sometimes I would lose that fight anyway. You know what yeah. I mean? Like when I look back, yeah. I'm like, man, I was so mad. But all they were doing was predicting a fight. Now, being on this side of the, of the, of the aisle as an analyst, you, can't, you know, think about it. And even speaking to George directly, if, you know, fans hate when you sit on the fence about a decision. I, yeah, I don't know who's going to win because you don't right. want to offend this mm -hmm. guy or that guy. You can't have this job if you're going to sit on the fence. And so uh, you got to make decisions. You got to analyze things. And sometimes, you know, it falls one way. Sometimes it falls the other way. As a fighter, I used to hate the media, and now I am. The media. <laughs> now you're the so, media. Like, I don't, you know, you know, you know that's how you, you live I still hate the media. You, you live long enough to be, you become the, the, the villain. Like, yeah. that's, 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 that's how I, you feel. I still when you hate the media. Song. I'm just in the media. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, George, you hosted Deep Waters. Deep Waters, check it out on YouTube so you can get the whole context because I think there are three words you said there out of context. That's very important. And well, in every situation, you really need scene, to get the context. Boxing scene headlines typically are. Like I said before, well, I, I, remember, I remember when I was fighting, I, 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 I would do an interview. And it will become different stories on different weeks. And people it would assume I was just continuing to talk in different ways. But meantime, it was all from one interview like a few weeks ago. Yeah, it just right. they made, they created 17 headlines out of it. It's, it's, it's a clickbait, but, you know, it, it well, is what it is. Meanwhile, yeah. some of these media analysts will actually take sparring sessions where him and I are having an argument that we are really making things up. And they turn that into an article, too. <laughs> yeah. so, there it's is amazing. That. We're playing lawyer in sparring <laughs> sessions. We're just trying to win, take, take a stand. Yeah, we're, we're, we're debating. We're <laughs> practicing our debates. Yeah. George, we're, we're on the media side of it because we've never been boxers before. So we have different perspective. What do you, what do you make of this situation? And, and then, of course, the deep waters. And once again, I want to mention that that's the show where you can hear uh, the, the full thought there, Paulie. Well, I agree with Paulie 100 percent. It's human nature. No one no one likes to hear things negative about them. You just don't. Some people don't respond, but he responded. And now with 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 social media, it's so much easier to get under someone's skin. So that's all this was. And I read the the boxing scene article, and it, it, it didn't even mention the show Deep Waters. It just said as told to Probox TV. Right. Like Paulie had an interview with Probox and just slammed George Cambosis for no reason. He's given an opinion. George Cambosis knows that. That's what Chris and Paulie do. They give opinions. They don't think that this is going to be a good fight for George Cambosis. What are they supposed to say? Are they supposed to lie? So it's human nature. I, I understand completely why Cambosis is, is is sounding out. And Chris, you're right. You need something to latch onto, but George, something to motivate but George, yourself. That's also, all. But George, it's also, you know, and I'm not slamming the actual fight. I'm slamming it for it's a title fight. You know, right. I, because George Cambosis having won the Tofima Lopez fight, it can kind of, you know, grab some of these paydays because that's what that's how you end up grabbing some of those late career paydays. Like I said, I did the same thing. You know, you off of, based off your accomplishments, now you become sort of a resume filler. You sort of get put in that situation. And listen, you got to be in it to win it. You're able, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. you get in those situations, you win it. But nonetheless, you still get opportunities based on the uh, uh, the reputation you've created for yourself based on some of the wins. So I don't have a problem with George having the fight. I have a problem with it being a title fight. And that's what I explained in the deep waters we talked about. But was there any issue with the, because the, the tweet 
was talking about girls and all that stuff. Is that it? Is that nah, a because that wasn't a that seemed like overly personal. Yeah, that was. That was. It wasn't really personal. That was. Uh... Okay. Because I thought I thought <laughs> that might have been. We're, might we're be a family like kind oriented of a show, man. It's also, so... it's also 11, 12 years ago. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. We're a family oriented show. Yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> well, also <laughs> that's what I really don't don't mind. Because th that was uh, that was a part. I was that like, actually, that might be a little low blow. That would actually, you know. It's become kind of famous over it. Oh, you know, me, okay. and, me and Broner. I mean, what was the fight over the weekend that just happened uh, uh, with that? Uh, Munguia? Uh, uh, no, Alantis yeah. Fox was fighting. Uh, what was the kid on the end of the car? Alantis Fox was fighting uh, the prospect from Golden Boy. He said yes. he got into boxing. He got, said he got into boxing when he uh, watched me and Broner fight. <laughs> oh, and okay. the whole hype the whole hype behind uh, all of that and then the fight. You know, then he started boxing. There and now he's, now he's on the zone as an undefeated prospect winning fights. You know, so I was like, you know what? <laughs> I can't, I can't Royalty really knock check. that fight. Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't knock but the whole also build up. To, to, to put it in the context, he said you weren't relevant since 2013. Well, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He he fought Devin Haney for the first time in 2022. So he hasn't been relevant no, since 2022. Again, he beat Tio in 21. So but, they, but again, there's dates. But again, I, I don't really knock George for taking it to heart. You know, because again, right. as a fighter, you kind of have to. I, I just mentioned that if you take the same standard, that means I've been, if I haven't been relevant since 2013, that means George hasn't been relevant since Delfimo, mm. you know, because it's kind of the same thing, you know, where you, the, the big fights, you're still in them, but you're not winning them. And so uh, I was still in big fights after 2013, but I stopped winning big fights after 2013. Mm. So if you take that standard, then George is kind of making my case that he shouldn't be in this fight. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, I will put it out there. I have to get this approved, but hey, we invite George Cambosas to come on to Pro Box TV and interview, spotlight interview and talk to us and, Get his side of the story. Maybe if there is, uh, I don't think Pauly has any beef with him, but if there's any anything, you go on, come on Pro Box TV. We talk it out. We love to hear from him. And so that's kind of like my formal invitation, although I don't have any say in the matter there. Uh, <laughs> take I gotta, it, take I gotta get that. You can imagine what it'd be like, though. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, That'd be fun. Yes, any, that would be interesting, to say the least. Little, All right. Billy Madison reference. Yeah, that for sure. <laughs> 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 it's pro, pro Cinema TV as well here. On Pro Box TV. Any, any final thoughts there before we wrap it up and move on, uh, Paul? Any, any last thing you want to say? Uh, just I mean, the lightweight up? division has a, a lot of good fighters. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I do think it's the last opportunity for George. I, I do. You know, and I think it's he's he's up against it. But you know what? You get to stack another check just in case. You yeah. know, and, and if it worse comes to worse, you get to get the you know pay the bank account for retirement, and that's what all fighters really are are all about. What they're what they're going for, and and uh, that that. Like I said, like I have already said, I mean, these are just points I've already made. That would be good for him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Thanks for watching us here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Pro Box TV. And download the Pro Box TV app where apps are available. And for live fights and so much more, visit us at ProBoxTV.com.